Lunch break. Hello everybody! And alright, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, alright. Oh, and Bobby's on. Hello everybody! <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Lunch Break, and yes, we're back once again! And it was a Friday, so I'm gonna set you guys down right here. Hopefully I don't drop you guys. Okay, there you go. Um, and thank you everybody for coming back. And this is season four, people, season four, first episode. Episode number 79 on textbooks. Holy crap, we've done so many. And yes, you guys are here and you guys made this happen. Thank you, James, who's on right now, and Sergeant Williams, who's on right now. Thank you all to the audience for your love and support for getting me this far. 79 episodes in. Holy crap. Which means we're that much closer to doing episode 100. I'm just saying. So we're almost there. But yeah, so, wow, <laughs> holy crap, and yes, as you've seen, I'm wearing my apron at the moment, but as I've said before, and if you guys have been following my social media, um, you have seen what's coming, so this is an end to an era, but this is what started it all, just to let you know, and now, to unveil and reveal the next line of what we're going to be wearing and showing, that it should be like some... Dun -dun 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 -dun. Okay, never mind. So, this is Lunch Break Season 4. I'm just gonna put this over here. There you go, people. <laughs> Let me just leave this off. Why is it not saying? Okay. Lunch Break Season 4 gear, right here. Look, look. Season 4 gear made by yours truly. Yes, if you're seeing this, this is what we're wearing. This is the new stuff, but this is not my stuff. Yes, you guys heard it, what? Not my stuff. No, 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 no. This is not mine. This is what we're gonna be wearing. As if you see, it says taste tester on it. It literally says taste tester. So now, without further ado, because everybody's been waiting, and by the way, logo was created by me. My uh, darling wife and myself have put this together. Uh, my, and uh, you know, we did this. So, without further ado, now you guys are gonna get to see. I'm just gonna put this over here. The lunch break gear. Crazy now, right? Crazy? Look at that. All professional now. You know, I had to put it on real quick because I, I didn't want to waste too much time. <laughs> but there you go. This is my new gear. Literally creating lunch rig right there, tire, logo, and of course my name in the back. Yes. New lunch rig gear. Hey, hey, need anything from the supermarket? Um, now that I know of, babe. <laughs> but there you go. Look at that. Look, 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 look. Ain't this awesome? I got the officialness, lunch break stuff on. <laughs> and Jane just said, well, see? There you go, lunch break gear right there. Look, 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 look. Well, I didn't put it in there. Lunch break, man. Lunch break. Look at that, look at that. It's official now, man. It's official. <laughs> I mean, it's always been official, but I'm just saying. Now I got an actual jacket. And of course, my sous chef has the same thing. Um, I did one for him as well. But now we have a whole bunch of different aprons that we can give away to people for free, by the way, for free. Um, so just for being and loving the show. But yes, we have the taste tester ones. 
we have an exclusive number one fan that's going away to somebody, by the way, because they want it. I'll let m uh, my wife take care of the details for that. And then I have a few others, but we definitely, now we have our own. I finally created a logo, and we're doing this right for season four, so we're getting there. So hopefully you guys appreciate this, all the trouble we've gone through to make this show how, how it happened. With everybody involved, with James, my audience, Melissa, my wife, with Super Mario, Dio, Doobie the Sous Chef, Tinkerbell, Overwatch, um, Uno Smoke, and everybody who I didn't get to mention, which is Dan and, and Tyrone and a whole bunch of other cast and crew and members and everything. You guys have made us come to this point in time. Legit, so thank you guys for everything you've done. And we definitely appreciate it. We definitely do. Thank you, thank you. The other second thing I want to also mention to everybody is that let's give a round of applause to also all those people in the abyss of this craziness. You know, from health uh, healthcare workers, from nurses, doctors, delivery people, trucks, every everybody, even ourselves, thank ourselves for staying safe during this craziness of a time. And I would also like to tell people to all those graduating um, students who didn't get to get, physically get an actual graduation, but to all the grads who are graduating in this semester or going to the next semester, we think of you during this time and everybody, we think of everybody during this time. And we literally want to celebrate you guys, you know, for doing the hard work and going through school, for all of us who've done it the same way. You know, congratulate to all of you guys and the healthcare workers as well, because I think I forgot to cry for you guys. But yes, thank you everyone who's doing what they must do during this craziness. But without further ado, because <laughs> he didn't come here for me to rant, but you know, maybe just look at this. And, 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 okay. Um, so on today's episode, I'm going to actually be doing something un unorthodox. I've done it once, I know. Lunch break doesn't do things for, until they do the first time, right? I've done it maybe like once or twice at work. But I'm going to show you actually how it's made here, which you can actually tweak it to use a toaster oven when you're at work or in your dorm or at home, whichever way you want to do it. Um, we're going to be making tostones. Yes, you heard it, tostones. And God forbid me, I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm going to unveil my grandma's recipe that is thrown in aftermath to make these freaking crazy delicious. I know I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but hey, listen, um, in order for it to keep a recipe alive, you have to pass it on to others, right? Remember that, you do have to pass it on. So I'm gonna be unveiling the secret sauce that uh, my grandmother used to put on these tostones. So, um, before all any of that, I'm gonna put a knowledge drop on you, which I got hit with a brick in my head because of this. Um, not in a bad way, but hey, listen, we all tend to try to make our own recipes our own, but uh, we have to give credit to where credit's due. So originally, tostones is basically the word derived from the Spanish word that means to toast. And I didn't even know that because, well, tostones, tos, toast. Yeah. Um, and the term also is used for a 50 cent coin in Honduras, apparently. Oh, Tostones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Any of the audience who's, who's um, Honduran, uh, let me know that. Uh, I want to know that. That's kind of curious. Do you guys call your 50 cents Tostones? <laughs> I would want to get some Tostones right now. <laughs> Money. <laughs> no, food. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. Um, um, so the origin of the dish is is basically mystifying, uh, apparently, because they believe it's a dish uh, that was originated in the Latin America um, cuisine countries, um, where it takes as like a Caribbean dish. So that's basically where it was born from. But it is said and documented that the creator, by the name of Doña Angelina, babe, if you're listening. Doña Angelina, who was a cook in the Los Robles restaurant in Salinas, Puerto Rico, okay, you guys just heard it, was the earlier discoverer of the person who actually did it early in Hibaro music 
in the poetry talk about a side dish known as today called tostones. So there's your knowledge drop, people. That literally, now you guys know, it came from Puerto Rico, all right? We just took a take on it and made it differently unto ourselves. All right, all right, all right, good. So, without further ado, let's get to the nitty gritty of doing this. So the first thing you're gonna need to make this dish is, of course, a plantain. Plantano is what we call it in Spanish. So, now, you have to make sure it's a green plantain. Okay, there's a big difference. Green plantains do turn yellow at, at a certain amount of time. Hey, Christina, what up? So you have to keep that in mind. Yes, these regular plantains, green plantains, do turn into sweet plantains at a certain amount of time. So you can't really make them into, tost uh, into tostones after that. So you gotta keep that in mind. There's a certain shelf life for it until it turns to this. Okay, because then they become into sweet plantains. So you gotta make sure they're green plantains because you need them to be <clears throat> paused hard <laughs> to cook them. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plantains and I'm gonna show you a technique also. So what you do is you cut the butt. I'm missing doing this at work. So you <laughs> cut the butt of this, top and bottom. Ah. <laughs> I can't. And then do the same for the additional um, plantains that you're gonna be cooking. And make sure you have a good sharp knife for all of this, by the way. You definitely wanna use a good knife, good sharp knife for this, right? So now here's the technique, because most people just go <laughs> and take this apart. If you look at the actual plantains, right? There's little small little corners, grooves here. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna take your knife and try to go down as good as you can to the end of the bottom, see? So in this way, you don't cut into the actual plantain. Now, <clears throat> old school tradition. My grandmother taught me to pull these apart from the seams and just slide your <coughs> fingers <laughs> down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting gassed on this. But remember, the thinner you do this, because I don't want to cut into the plantains, the easier it makes it. But if you don't want to use your hands, you know, you can use the knife to just cut the seams. Because the thing is, what you want to do is that you want to try to take it off as if you do close. See? And don't worry about it if it's not perfect. Um, that's okay. We're not trying to be perfectionists. We're just trying to take the clothes of the plantains. See? And then you just pull them apart. Bam. See? That's all you have to do. Now sometimes, as you see, some will stay behind. Just use your knife's flat side and just trim it off. There you go. And that's how you get one planter. <laughs> I just pick these up. And then put this in a plate for now. Because we're gonna wash those two and then cut them. After you peel them, that's what you wanna do. So again, you see the grooves and the corners of each one of these, right? You see them? All I'm gonna do is cut into it right there. As you see, cut into it and go down the line as good as you can. And that's it. And mind you, like I said, there's no perfectionist to be done on this. See? And then you start putting them apart. That's how you get those studies. So that's the first part. And that's the easy part, supposedly. And then you see, I'm using my thumb to apply pressure to pull them apart, see? So you can see the technique that's being used to take these off. And if my aunt was on, she would tell you, because I also learned this from my aunt. So my grandmother and my aunt 
back home in DR taught me how to do these things. Because of course, you know, one has to remember old school traditions. And as I said before, even those remnants that are stay behind, all you use is the flat of your, your knife. You align it with the plantain and just go down. See? Thank you. And that's it. All right. Now, let's wash these and I'm gonna show you the cuts. And remember, don't use hot water. You don't wanna end up cooking your foods by mistake. So now, we're going to take one of the plantains, and as you see, what we're going to do is we're going to do an incline cut, right down for the first one. There you go. Then for the rest of these, what you want to do is do quarter cuts, because when you take these tostones and you flatten them, you want to have the, you have, you want to be able to have a little bit of meat in it. <laughs> Um, so you can squish them, so because they need to be refried or fried twice, right? So I'm just gonna cut this into almost an inch of a cut. You see that inch of a cut, and it's incline. So again, inch of a cut, inch of a cut, inch of a cut, inch of a cut, inch, inch, and and there you go. Now you have your cut up. Pantones. Easy. So, do it again. Take these, put that way, and then do the last one. So, put it where it's uh, facing away from you. And again, inch of a cup, inch of a cup, inch of a cup. There you go. See? And just follow that. And there you go. Now you have a whole bunch of plants. All right. So that was that stuff for the plantains. Now, before we get to the plantain cooking, we don't need actually no. Now I'm going to show you the secret sauce because the secret sauce needs to cook first uh, before the plantain is done. All right. So what we're going to do. Is I'm gonna take a saucepan, but you can use a microwave, microwave safe bowl for this part, or a grill. Um, I think maybe. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this first. All right, sorry about that. And I'm gonna set it on this side because I want to use this side to actually cook up the um, the, the tostones. So I'm gonna set my up and on, put it on medium heat. All right, we got that settled. Now, two things are gonna happen. So I'm gonna show you the secret sauce that normally I'm not supposed to show people, but I'm gonna show it anyway. Um, what you need to do is first is that you need to get an onion. Legit, you gotta get an onion. So rest red onions or uh, white onions work great. Um, you just need the taste of it. So we're gonna. Cut our red onions over here. We'll cut the top side. All right. And what you need from this is that you need about three to four rings, okay? And they have to be almost uh, an eighth. Yeah, an eighth. Yeah, an eighth of cut. And last one. There we go. Nice. All right. So we got that. Now let's clear whatever stuff is on here. Oh, the first layer of the onion that we don't need. All 
right. A few seconds. Gonna fish these. Make sure you don't put no outer layers by mistake. There we go. All right, so that should be similar right now. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna actually put these, ooh, there's some water in there. There we go, got the water out. So now, we're gonna add a little bit of oil to this. All right? So a little bit of oil is what we're gonna use to cook the onions. This is the secret sauce, by the way. So start writing this down, okay? So you're gonna need, and plus, you can't use olive oil for this, by the way. You need to use either corn oil, vegetable oil, or any oil that has fat in it instead of olive oil. It, it's the secret sauce. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil in this. This is what we're gonna use for the sauce, all right? There we go. Oh, and you're gonna be using that also to make the tostones because that's what actually gives it the taste when it's cooking. Alright, so we're gonna put the oil in here. And we're gonna actually put these in here. Uh full and whole. There you go. We're gonna put the whole onion in here fully. Alright. I'm just trying to learn so this way I don't get messed up. Oh, and by the way, we also have new utensils, but for the show, I just saw a, a layer of non onion in there. All right. Um. So yeah, we also have uten new utensils for the show. Woo! Yeah, I know. We're, we're trying to go with the orange theme for this season. So yes. So that you see now. All right. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a turn. So we're gonna let these cook fully until they're nice and soft. And we're keeping them whole, by the way. All right, we're gonna cover that up. All right, so here's the rest of the ingredients. <coughs> Sorry, Grandma. That we're gonna be adding to the sauce part, right? So you're gonna need, already you already know the onions are in there. You're gonna need a, a double seasoning. Put that in there. Right. Okay. You're gonna need cilantro. I can get it out of this. All right. You're gonna need some cumin powder. Now, you're gonna need some onion powder because you can't do the trick without onions. At least one of them. Uh, oregano. Okay. A little bit of salt. All right, and then mix that in. And then once you do that, set it down to low. So you can start slow cooking this. And I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Look at that. Nice, right? Alright, set you back down. Alright, put that back to low. Now, the last thing that this needs, and I'm going to show you guys. Now, you can use minced garlic, uh, basically you need garlic, um, or you can actually use an, an actual garlic. So, minced garlic works the same. The only thing that you got to worry about is that minced garlic does have, uh, it's preserved in natural oils and everything. So, that's the only thing. So, we're going to take 
one garlic um, petal? Petal? I don't can't remember. And mince it. You guys are gonna see me mince the garlic. And just mix it as as fine as you can. There you go. You want them into nice little pieces, little chunks, right there. And once you're doing that. We're gonna stick it into this. There, there's a bit of piece of garlic on top. There we go. And once this is turning nice and brown, as it does here, all you gotta do is turn it off and set it to the side. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna add these just in, just like that. All right? Way. Buy something. I need a cutting board for the flame. All right? And then just mix those garlics into the mix because the heat is actually gonna provide the rest of it as it's cooking. Close it up, set it to the side, and that's it for now. For that one. Alright, we'll clean up the area. So now comes the hot pot. So we're gonna set our burner on. Alright, get our big pan. So now we're gonna put oil on this. Now you need a little bit more oil than you normally use. Think about that, at least to fill the pan. So depending on the saucepan or the microwave wave safe bowl, um, you can actually, what you do, instead of using the skillet, um, if you coat all of them and you put it on the grill, you get the same type of um, mechanism of what I'm doing here. Um, just make sure you, you watch them because they're gonna cook up really fast um, on the grill than they do on the skillet because you can control the temperature on this All right, so we're gonna let that heat up a little bit And what you're gonna start to do is that you're gonna take these guys and you're gonna center each one separately from everybody Right, and that's what you want to do because they need to cook fully thoroughly on each side because then you have to flip them So you're gonna start taking your tostones Right see it's not ready yet because see it's not hot enough it needs to be hot enough, so we're gonna leave one at least in there so we can see it. What I'm gonna do is get a fork. So now, we need this to be at a certain temperature to cook this tostones. And you'll know that by the fact that the bubbles will start to rise on the side. And that's how you do tostones. You guys gotta look at this one. Let me show you guys this. While that's preparing to heat up, look at this. Look how they turn. You see that? That's the sauce. So I'm gonna sit you back like there. The little drop here. All right, good. Back up. We're just waiting for the, the oil to heat up. So how are you guys doing so far today? How are you liking this? How do you love this? You guys like it? Yes? No? Maybe does it work? You think it? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
we're gonna give this a few minutes because uh, remember this is a lot of oil so a lot of oil is gonna take a lot of time to cook up to the point where you need them to be at so that's the other thing so right now yes you're still now still not bubbly um, Oh, actually no, come see it. It's talking, look. Little bubbles. You see that? See the bubbles? Uh oh. The bubbles are showing you right there, look. Let me get closer to you guys. You guys can see it. See the bubbles? See the bubbles for me? That's when you know. That's when you know that it's time to start cooking. Right, so now. Start placing them in. I'm old school, so I'm not afraid of the oil. Start dumping them in. Taking each spot inside. Now we start from the middle and away. And then you start filling them up. So as you're putting them in, as you see, the oil will start to rise, which is a good thing. That's what we, not, we want them to happen. And that's how you know you've put enough oil because remember you have to coat both sides of these when you flip them over and just make sure that they don't start to stick at the bottom okay three more and the last one there we go now, you have to give these time to cook. And what you're waiting for is basically for them to brown at the bottom. So like I said, the more heat you have on this, the better to cook them. Hey, Cody, what's up? <laughs> Christina just said nice. So this is actually how you make it. So you have to have the oil bubble enough to the point where that's how you know when to place these guys in to cook. If it's not hot enough, you're gonna be spending all day trying to cook these guys and they're not gonna cook. You just have to just watch them to see if they start to turn yellow. And that's how you'll know. So basically, as you see the color on top, right? And if you focus, let me show you with the, the fork, you focus on it, see? At the bottom, they're starting to turn yellow. That's how you know that it's gonna be time for them to be flipped. So when they're nice and yellowish, that's when you flip them over. Let me set you back down there. So all you gotta do is just watch them carefully to make sure that they're nice and <coughs> hard at the bottom. Because that's basically what we're doing. We're creating a crunchy layer on both sides of these that in the middle of it, it's still soft to the point that in order to make the tostones, we're gonna flatten them and make them into tostones. What happened? Oh, we are hey, Corin, uh, we are making tostones, basically. And I'm giving away my secret sauce that my grandma taught me. Um, if you watched in the beginning of the episode, um, that's what I did. So I know grandma's gonna kill me, but listen, traditions need to be passed on to everyone in order for it to stay tradition, right? I'm just saying. In order to keep a recipe alive, that's what you gotta do. So now. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the fork and test to make sure that it's hardened at the bottom. If not, just flip them back up so they can continue cooking. Cause you gotta give these guys a little bit of time to cook. Now mind you, like I said, if you're doing this on the grill, you gotta coat these and grill them. Now mind you, don't grill them for too long cause all you want is the outside to be crunchy cause you still have to smash them and redo it again. So. Take them out, smash them, coat them again, and then put them on the grill. And then let me know. There you go. Nice and brownish. There you go. Because the thing is, you want them to be hard enough. If not, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a mush when you start to crush these. You don't want mush. So you definitely have to give these guys proper time to start cooking. That's the one thing that you really do need to do for tostones. Because if they're not crunchy yet, you're not going to have a nice little basis when you start to, to 
literally basically squish them. You know, then you're gonna have soggy tostones. But if you have a, a was a deep fryer, you stick these guys in there for five minutes, take them out, let them you know um, drain for like maybe like a minute, then smash them and then put them back in. That's easy for you guys, right there, done. All right, there you go. Let's start flipping this over. Oh. And what I'm using is, what I'm doing is I'm taking the fork, plugging them from the back side, and just flipping them over, see? That's all I'm doing. This way it allows for the back side to cook. See how they're nice and golden brown now from the bottom side? If your fork is able to go through it on the back side, pause, <laughs> then you're not doing it right. <laughs> See how this one looks uh, soft? Yeah, no, that has to go back in. That's how you test it. So you take the fork and you try to stab the top. And you can actually feel if they have hardened. I know that doesn't that doesn't sound right, right? Yeah, see this one's soft, see? So that one I have to flip over, and that one's soft. And then that's how you really do tostones. <laughs> she said, but he said, yum. Melissa says supermarket run done. Now to get home. Okay, babe. Be safe. See? So this one I have to flip over. Yeah, see? I was nice and hard on that one. Oh, that one's up. Yeah, any of the soft ones, you have to flip them over so they can cook up. Because you don't want to, like I said, you don't want mush. You want a, a nice little flattened pattern. All right, this one's good. And you can use tongs for this also if you want them to make it easier for yourself and you don't want to take the time to try to take them out. What you can do is just take the tongs to make it easier to transport. Just remember, you gotta also test it to make sure that they're not mushy on top. Like I said, you want to have that nice little crispy tenderness to it before they get flattened. And I'm going to show you that too, by the way. Man, who has frying pan at their job? LOL. <laughs> nah, I told them they can use the grill. All they got to do is just coat these um, and cook them. Because you'll get the same basically the same type of reaction you, you just get the, the nice little crunchiness on the outside so you only put it for a certain amount of time then you flatten them and put them back as you, after you coat them again I'm just doing it on the frying pan like I said I've done this before at the job I think once or twice um, <laughs> ooh, sorry um, <clears throat> Tinkerbell <laughs> I said her name by mistake. She's gonna kill me. Um, Tinkerbell likes those stones, by the way. All right, so here we go. Now, the next part of this is an interesting one. So what you gotta do is you can use any flat surface to crush these, even a cup will work. Um, uh, but you have to make sure that it's 
something large enough to squish it, right? So I'm gonna use my little cup of here. My little cup, right? So I'm gonna take one of these. And as you see, all you gotta do is just squish these. So, oh, let me take one more plate. So I'm gonna put the squish ones. Now, mind you, they have to be crunchy. So in this way, see, you hear it? Bam. A perfect tostón. That's what you want. If you don't hear that crunchiness, you didn't do it right. Bam, look at that. Because if you did it right, they should not stick to what you're using to crush it. I mean, some will stick, but as long as they come off good, then you're good. See? Perfect. That's how you make, look at that. That's how you make a perfect tostón. Tostón. Mind you, I'm touching these massively hot. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, I thought I had a good one. There you go. So that's what you want to hear. When you're crushing these, you should be hearing um, the crunchiness of what you cook, by the way. Oh, I think I'm gonna smell something else. There you go. And then baby one. And that's the other reason why you make them at least um, a uh, quarter of an inch. Um, so in this way, when you're frying them, they don't get to be all over the place, all mushy. You want them to be just that roundish, the stony looking type. These things are extremely hot, by the way. And I'm touching them with my hands. <laughs> I got few more left. Right. There you go. So let me show you up close and personal. All right. So this is what this is what's happening. So I'm taking one of these. See? And all I'm doing is crushing it just to that much. See? And that's it. That's basically what I'm doing. In there and the last two. There you go. And the last two. Bam. All right. Now, just any more. So there's your first phase of tostones, right there. First phase. Now comes the second phase, right? So what you're gonna do is dump these guys in there, like you did before. There we go. And these only need to be cooked once, so you don't have to flip these over. Because these are flat enough that they're already in the uh, oil. See? That's why the bubbles are forming all over it. So now all you gotta do is watch, give them a few minutes to cook, and then that's it. You need to take them out. Let me feel one more in here. That one and that one. Is there one more? Oh wait. Yeah. Okay. And that's basically it, people. That's all you have to do. That's how you make dos tones. That's basically it. Look, and if you're looking at it, look how fast they started turning already. See? That's how fast you're gonna get them. 
Once the heat is hot enough, make yourself those bastones. Okay, give it a few more seconds and I'm gonna pull them up. By the way, this is probably easier. And what you want to do is after math is you can place these on a towel so it can drain and cool. Um, and then you can serve them because they're going to be extremely hot when you take them out of this. Have some to cool, so this way we can taste that stuff. I'm almost done with the last one. I only got like three more today. Listen to this, people. Look. Nice, right? That's what you want. That's what, literally what you want. <laughs> That's how you make an actual tostone. Like, seriously, look. Look at the color of this. I think the, the light is going down. That's what you really, really want on there. Oh, yeah, it's the light went out. Yep, it did. Oh, shit. Sorry about that, folks. Looks like my light went dim. But yes, so that's basically all you have to do. That's how you make a true tostone. Like, at least the Dominican style one. Or, I don't know if anybody else does the same, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, from my ethnicity, that's what, how we do it. And all you do is just give it a few minutes. Once it's done, see? Nice golden brown. And take it out. Okay. There we go. And you've made yourself, make sure you turn it off, those stories. Now, comes the interesting part. So I'm gonna set this this way. Where are you trying to run to? And now I'm gonna set you that way. Mind you, this is going to be extremely hot over here. So, now, I'm going to show you guys what this is going to taste like. Let's clean this up. Yeah. Alright. Sorry about that, folks. I think me placing the, uh, me placing the, uh, the pan that way kind of disconnected me. Uh, cause they, uh, the, the camera got hot. So I'm just gonna show you the last piece of what you need to do. So, I have the tostone, I got a little bowl here, so I'm gonna taste test this for you, right? And I'm gonna take the sauce. So, it seems that I lost connection, so I'm gonna just have to show you guys the rest of this, um, on what actually happened. I think me putting the, this that way. Oh, somebody was calling me. That's probably what it was. Sorry about that. Um, so, the next thing all you gotta do is I'm gonna take a bowl. Okay, take a bowl. So, you guys can see. This is that sweet. Okay. So, I'm gonna take one of the tostones right here. Probably, uh, you guys can still see it. Right? So, I'm going to take the sauce here um, and show you guys what I'm going to do with this. So I have the tostones here. This is the sauce that we made. I'm going to take a little bit because I don't want to use all of it. And apply it to this so you can see it, see? Applying it. Okay. Let's see if I remember it. If it was just the same as my grandmother made, right? 
So, my news is up. Grandma, I did not disappoint. I did it. That is crazy delicious. With this sauce, legit. And that on top, I don't know if this is gonna survive before my <laughs> my wife gets here. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you know, this another one. This ain't. Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, you put the, the sauce over it. And then that's it. Yo. I must know what they do. Legit, they do. So, without further ado, thank you everybody once again for watching Lunch Break Season 4, Episode 1. I greatly appreciate you guys. Thank you for the love and support as you always do. And <clears throat> go to IMDb, like, comment, and share. Look up the word lunch break. Spread our social media to the world. Join our social media. Um, spread the love. Let everybody know about this. And thank you once again, as always. As we say here in lunch break and you know the new gear, don't settle for less and make it your best. I was your host, CK, and this was Lunch Break Peoples. Thank you once again for another season. Catch you guys later. Bye.